Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome to you all, those who have been with us for this morning of reflection, and also those who join us now for Mass on this Ash Wednesday. Today we mark the beginning of Lent. And this Lent is again in the context of the pandemic of COVID and all the struggles that are associated with it. It's going to be a different Lent yet again. This morning, for those who joined the morning of reflection, we were invited to conquer our fear with love and to deepen our sense of peace through the giving of ourselves to others. Let's pray as we celebrate this Eucharist on this Ash Wednesday that God's grace would enable us to do that during this Lent. Conquer our fear and allow us to offer ourselves to one another. And so let's begin in prayer. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that, as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and tear your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, and repents of evil. Who knows whether he will not turn and repent and leave a blessing behind him, a cereal offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord, for for we we have have sinned. sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord, for for we we have have sinned. sinned. My transgressions, Truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord, for we we have have sinned. sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. 
Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord, for we we have have sinned. sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Have Have mercy, mercy, O Lord, Lord, for for we we have have sinned. sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, We entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At the acceptable time I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal glory. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Praise to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be aware of practicing your piety before people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, Sound no trumpets before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, Do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A number of years ago, I had the privilege of working at a Jesuit retreat house in California, not too far from San Francisco, a very beautiful part of the world. And one of my first experiences at that retreat house, once I had arrived there, was a retreat that was preached by a Jesuit by the name of Father Greg Boyle. He's the founder of Homeboys in Los Angeles, a place that works to reform gangsters, to try and help young people who have been sucked into gangs to get out of those gangs and have some sense and some hope 
that they can live their lives in a way of integrity. I was impressed by that retreat and still remember it pretty well. And after meeting him and hearing him speak that weekend, I read his book, Tattoos on the Heart. It's good spiritual reading for Lent, by the way. So if you're looking for something to read, I can recommend that book or his second book, which has subsequently been published called Barking to the Choir. But what that reveals beyond all else is a man who has boundless compassion. In those tattooed, hardened, murderous youngsters, many of whom are felons, Father Greg Boyle sees possibility, he sees promise, and he sees hope. A year later, uh, I went later, not a year later, I went later to visit homeboys in L.A. and see the work that Greg Boyle is doing for myself. And indeed, if you just watched his interactions with those ex-gangsters, you saw a man who really understands what it means to hope in a future. Not so long ago, I also read a remarkable story about a woman in Lebanon, Sister Micheline Latouf. And her ministry consists of helping men and women and children who have literally run for their lives. They are refugees. Most of them are Muslim because many of them are from Syria. Millions of people have been displaced by the war in Syria. And half of those are children. Many fled to Lebanon where they struggle to care for them and most especially to give them the health care that they need. And despite all that, Sister Micheline sees in the suffering people potential, possibility, promise, and hope. And she says something like this in that interview that I read. There is an old saying, the candle that is just smoking, not lit, still has life in it, still has hope in it. And she explains, I believe that even a person who is in a very bad situation still has a spark, still has light. And it is my mission to show them that spark, that light. Now, friends, isn't that in essence what Lent is all about? It's a season of possibility. It's a season of promise. It's a season of hope. It's a story of a spark that is waiting to be lit. Perhaps the smoldering smoke that we think marks the end of something is now able to be lit again. Lent is traditionally a time of penance and a time of prayer, a time when we actively seek to turn our hearts towards the Lord. We seek God in an active way, perhaps more actively than in the other seasons of the year. And we often choose to do something for Lent. Maybe we give up something or maybe we take something on as an act of penance. But today I want you to think differently, especially about the ashes that are before you, because I think they have something to say to us. They say perhaps that we are a people that is feeling burned out at the moment. We feel burned out in the midst of a pandemic burned out by strain and by stress, burned out by anxiety and wondering what will happen next. We are told that in just a few weeks, we may face a third wave of COVID-19. Maybe 
we feel burned out by wondering where God is in the midst of this pandemic and the chaos and upheaval around us. Maybe you feel like your flame has turned to smoke. Maybe you feel that ash is really a nice image for your life at the moment. Our, hot, our hearts no longer burn with fervor as they should. And maybe we desire or want them to, yet the reality is that they don't. Our churches have been closed for a long time, and when they have been opened, then there are only a few people that are allowed to attend. And so maybe we feel that even our faith has been left simply to smolder, that the flame is gone. It seems to me this Lent, the invitation to us is to try once again to bring our smoking candles back to life. As Sister Micheline puts it, the candle that is just smoking, a sliver of ash and wax, still has life and still has hope. There is a spark that is waiting, an ember that can still glow. Our invitation over these 40 days is to bring back to life what perhaps seems to be lost or seems to be dying. And so before you decide today to give up something or to do something extra, perhaps you want to step back and ask yourself, what do I need to do to grow, to become more fully the person that God is always inviting me to be. We don't have to give up something or take something on. Perhaps this Lent, in the context in which we live, is one where we should be asking ourselves, what do I need rather than what do or what should I do? The ashes today have a double meaning. They remind us where we are, perhaps that uncomfortable space. And yet, they also remind us who we are invited to be. They remind us of what we can be. By the grace of God, we can be bearers of light, people full of possibility, of promise, and of hope. I want you to take a minute to look at those ashes that are before you wherever you are today, perhaps on the table in front of your screen or wherever you have placed those ashes. See in those ashes the fire in you waiting to be ignited, the embers that will be stirred up in these 40 days to new life by prayer, by fasting and by almsgiving, or whatever you do or decide to do this Lent to change, to grow, and to become more loving and more passionate. Possibility, promise, and hope. The candle that is still smoking has life in it, still has hope. Think of that today as you put the ash on yourself or as you put the ash on those around you. This Lent, allow the Lord to stir the embers in your own life into a flame. Become who God is inviting you to be. Set the dark world ablaze with the flame of your own self enlightened by the Lord, because within you is possibility, is promise, and hope. And so we wish you a wonderful Lenten journey. And remember, do what you can and not what you can't. That's an important principle. 
do what you can to grow in love, to recognize that possibility, that promise, and that hope. And indeed, even though this will be another strange Lent, you will grow and become the person that God wants you to be. So friends, I'm going to invite you now to have the ashes that you're going to use in front of you and to join me as we pray together that the Lord will bless these ashes. And so brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with, abun with the abundance of his grace these as ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. So I'm going to invite you to stretch out your own hand towards the ashes as I pray this prayer of blessing, knowing that the Lord in these extraordinary times will bless those ashes too that you use today. O oh God, who move by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ears to our prayers, and in your kindness, Pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who will be marked with ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, dear friends, we're going to now share these ashes. We're going to do what we've been asked to do, simply take a bit of ash and drop it either on our own heads if we're alone or on the heads of those who are with us at this time. I will pray the words that we pray, and then we'll simply do that in silence. And when you're done, I invite you just to sit down once again and to remain silent until we continue with the celebration of this Eucharist. And so, dear friends, repent and believe the good news. We have heard God's word. We respond now to God's word by bringing before him our own prayers on this Ash Wednesday for our needs, but also for the whole church and indeed the world in which we live. Let us pray for the whole Christian church as we enter into Lent, that it would be a time of transformation and change that all Christians would seek a closer walk with the Lord through the season of grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray 
for all who feel tired, weary, stressed, and anxious, that this time of Lent would be one which, through our spiritual practices, would bring new energy and new passion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all those on the margins of the church and our society, that during this time of Lent, our eyes and ears would be open to them and their need, and we would ask to do what we can to reach out with what we have to others who are less fortunate. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all those who are sick and those who care for them, that the Lord would place his healing hand on the sick and all those who care for them would know God's blessing upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all of those in public office, that they would live with integrity, put an end to corruption, dishonesty, and cronyism. Let us pray that they will seek to serve those who elected them and not themselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who have died, especially those who have lost their lives unexpectedly and tragically, that their souls and the souls of all those who have died would rest in God's peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we thank you at the beginning of the season for the grace which you bestow on us a season of possibility, of promise, and of hope. Help us now, as we begin this journey, to make it with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May we all accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. 
And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan, his assistant, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to pray for peace, most especially at the beginning of this time of Lent. Peace in our own hearts, in our families, our communities, our country, and the world. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So it was good to have you with us for this beginning of Lent, this Ash Wednesday, for those who spent the morning reflecting with us and for those who joined us for Mass. I wish you a very happy and indeed a very fruitful Lenten journey, even though we are living in these extraordinary times. So bow your heads now so we can pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.